John, what about getting the kids involved in that giving during your lifetime? I think that's an ideal thing to do. Uh, I know an awful lot of families that uh, include their kids. You know, that could be around the dinner table or breakfast table and talk about uh, maybe some needs. Maybe your church is asking for you to make a pledge. Whatever the giving is maybe that's going on, your kids need to see your generosity. Uh, I had a father tell me one time, I had made the statement to him, more is caught than taught when it comes to kids. And he said, I realized because I do online giving, they had never seen me give money anyplace. Wow. Well, maybe this is the time to change that. Ron, it's a great idea. It's an important lesson for all of us. And we appreciate you sharing it with us today. Thanks for stopping by. Well, I love it, Rob. Thanks for asking. That's Ron Blue, our good friend. You can read more on this topic in his landmark book, Splitting Airs. As I said, we're off today, so don't call in, but we've got some great calls lined up in advance. We'll go to those just around the corner. I'm Rob West, and this is Faith and Finance on American Family Radio. Biblical wisdom for your financial decisions. We'll be right back after this break. Jesus. I'm David Wolin with Haven Today, inviting you to anchor your day in God's Word. Something is wrong in this world. That much should be obvious. We see so much evil, and evil being done against Christians in many places. Scripture tells us that there is great evil, spiritual forces bent on destroying the people of God. But we have no reason to fear. The lives of precious saints may be attacked, but in the end, they have victory in Christ Jesus. 1 John 4, 4 tells us, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The evil one, Satan, will one day be defeated. So take courage in Jesus. Get more encouragement with Anchor Devotional. Visit GetAnchor.com. We are grateful for support from the Eventide Center for Faith and Investing. ECFI is an educational initiative of Eventide Asset Management that seeks to help Christians understand and practice biblically faithful investing. They do this through their podcast and online journal featuring articles from industry thought leaders and their course called Discover God's Story for Investing. More information is available at faithandinvesting.com. That's faithandinvesting.com. Fostering and adoption is not a band-aid for infertility. No, like it I is agree. a calling and God can change the desire of your heart and make that so rewarding. It's the most yeah. beautiful, selfless thing. It's pure religion, but it's not a fix to I desire biological child. God has to deal with that in your heart separately. Hannah's heart. Encouraging couples through infertility and miscarriage. Saturdays, 4 a.m. Central on AFR or on the AFR app. We're grateful for support from Movement Mortgage, who provides residential home loans in all 50 states. Guided by a mission to love and value people and a goal to redefine the mortgage process, Movement seeks to help others achieve their financial goals. You can find out more at movement.com slash faith. Movement Mortgage LLC supports equal housing opportunity and MLS number 39179. For licensing information, please visit nmlsconsumeraccess.org. If the heavy burden of debt is robbing you of freedom and peace of mind, Christian Credit Counselors can help. We're a nationwide nonprofit credit counseling organization that has helped over 300,000 individuals in the last 27 years get out of credit card debt 80% faster while honoring that debt in full. To learn how Christian Credit Counselors can help you, visit ChristianCreditCounselors.org. That's ChristianCreditCounselors.org. Or call 800-557-1985.
point you back to God's Word, help you apply God's wisdom to your financial decisions and choices. You see, folks, you and I, we have a high calling as it relates to our stewardship of God's money. That's right, it all belongs to Him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That's what Psalm 24.1 tells us. And therefore, we're stewards and money is now a tool to accomplish God's purposes. It's morally neutral. It's not good or bad. The question is, how are we going to use it? Are we going to hold it loosely? Are we going to allow it to compete with our affection and devotion to God himself? Because remember, the Bible says you cannot serve God and money. And I don't think that was an accident that uh, those two things were put alongside one another, because if something is going to compete with our affection and devotion to the Lord, I would submit it's most often going to be money and the things that money can buy. So how do we develop an eternal perspective as it relates to our money? Well, that's what we want to help you do on this program each day to help you see your resources, God's resources that you're managing through the lens of scripture, applying a biblical worldview. That's what we do with all of our programming here at American Family Radio, and that certainly includes God's money. And let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to begin in uh, Maryland today. I bet it's pretty in Maryland. Uh, Josephine, how can I help? Oh, thank you, Brother Rob, for taking my phone. I'm a little bit nervous. but um, <laughs> No reason to be nervous, Josephine. Just you and I having a conversation. So tell me how I can okay. help you. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, I did everything that I could to save on 401k when I was working but something happened, I had a stroke, and then I'm going through a lot of challenges. So I don't have any more 401k, and, uh, um, and then I'm, I retire early. Um, and I don't know, the only thing I have right now is that it's my home. And I received a letter from uh, AAG uh, asking me if they can help me to have a, you know, reverse mortgage. But I know one week I was listening to you uh, and uh, you were talking about the um, uh, reverse mortgage. Do you think it will help me? It might. Uh, it's definitely a tool to consider in this season of life. You are the right age for it. Um, uh, the question is how much equity you have in your home. Do you have a home mortgage? I have a home mortgage. Um, I I never touched the equity. As, as it went up and down, up and down, but I still pay the same thing. So um, that's where I'm at. Okay. Do you have any, what do you think your home is worth today, roughly? I don't know. I think it's, it's gone down. I got it at 220. So I don't know, maybe 180. I don't know. Should, well, what makes that. you think it's gone down? Because homes have been appreciating quite rapidly, the, especially the last several years. Yeah, but the only thing is I'm receiving a lot of people try to make me sell the house. And uh, my own mortgage company told me that I have an equity for 72000 So I don't know how true that is. Because okay. I don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, what do you owe on it today? Like if it's like roughly like 130. You think you owe about 130? Yeah. Yeah, so we are gonna need to see how much equity you have in there and what it's actually worth. One way you could do that, this isn't a definitive number, but it could be a starting point is, are you comfortable using the internet, Josephine? Um, no, because of my site. <laughs> I see, no problem. Um, there is a website, maybe you have a friend or a family member that could check this out. There's a website called Zillow.com, Z-I-L-L-O-W.com. Uh, you could go to that website and without giving them your email or anything, you could just type in your address and it would give you a rough estimate, um, what they call a Zestimate, <laughs> uh, for your home value. And it would be by pulling all the comparable homes in the area and then coming up with the value. The key is one kind of standard rule of thumb is that you need 50% equity in your home to qualify for a reverse mortgage. Um, and so that would mean that if your mortgage today, you think you owe 130,000, uh, you're going to need a, uh, your home to be worth at least 260000 to qualify for a reverse mortgage. Um, now, you do 
sound like somebody who's a good candidate for it because typically what we see is in this season of life if folks are ill prepared for retirement because they had a major medical event and had to deplete their retirement savings like you did or they just started late or you know just because of lifestyle creep they were not able to prioritize saving and now they're in this season of life they're living off of social security you know they barely have enough to make cover their bills certainly not any extra but they're sitting on a large uh, amount of home equity I do like a reverse mortgage as a possible planning tool because unless you're going to sell it and downsize and that has its challenges um, if you're planning to stay in this home for the foreseeable future a reverse mortgage will convert that equity uh, to either a line of credit but but more importantly for somebody like you to a monthly income stream and they would determine how much based on the equity in your home and your age which would give them your life expectancy and then they would give you a set amount for the rest of your life every month and that could be the difference between you not really barely getting by and having enough to pay your bills with even a little left over and the nice part about a reverse mortgage is if it's a, what's called a HECM, a home equity conversion mortgage, which is a, a kind of reverse mortgage, then the Federal Housing Administration is gonna guarantee the loan. Meaning, if for some reason you live to 150 and they paid you out more than uh, your home was worth, and it's your, when you sold the home or when you passed away, if you owed more than the home can be sold for, the US government would step in and make up the difference. You're not personally, or your estate, would not be liable for it. So that's a nice thing. It's not a, it's what they call non-recourse debt. Normally when you borrow something, if the collateral doesn't satisfy it, they come after you personally. That's not the case with a reverse mortgage. But if you don't have 50% equity, you may not qualify at all. So what I would do, uh, Josephine, is um, normally I'd send you to our friends at Movement Mortgage online at movement.com slash faith. Uh, but because you don't use the internet, our team will get your information and I'll have somebody to get in touch with you to do a little deeper dive and help you determine whether or not you qualify for a reverse mortgage, okay? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate your call. Listen, you were nervous, but you did great. So uh, thank you for oh, being on. Please, please call me back anytime and you stay on the line. We'll get your information and get somebody in touch with you, okay? Thank you, Meg. God All right. bless you for whatever you're doing right now. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you as well. Uh, Mark and Candace, stay right there. We'll get you guys after the break. Hey, some interesting data in the news today. The Biden administration is looking at into ways to further restrict donor-advised funds. So this is one of my favorite charitable planning tools out there. Think of it like a charitable checking account. Well, critics of donor-advised funds, including the Biden administration, say it's a way for the ultra-wealthy to take immediate tax deductions while allowing money to sit unused indefinitely. The problem is that's not what the data says. I mean, uh, the average donor advised fund today, more than half of them have less than $50,000 in them. And it is a fabulous tool. So more than 70 people representing the charitable sector showed up in an IRS hearing to argue against the proposed restrictions. Some testified that the changes would significantly reduce contributions to nonprofits. We'll keep you posted on this one. This is one to continue to watch. Back with much more after this. Stay with us. Join us for the second annual AFA at the Art. Myself and Tony Bentagliano, his family and my family and several of the other staff members at AFA. Tickets include transportation from the hotel to the museums, both tours, and special presentations by Answers and Genesis speakers. AFA has reserved a block of rooms at a discounted price with the Marriott Cincinnati Airport Hotel. To register, go to afa.net slash events and join us for AFA at the Art. We're grateful for support from Guidestone, whose diversified suite of investment solutions align with Christian values to create positive change in the world. More information is available at guidestonefunds.com slash faith. Investing involves risk, including potential loss of principal. Carefully consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Guidestone funds before investing. They're distributed by Foresight Funds Distributors, LLC, which is not an advisory affiliate, a registered investment advisor, nor do they provide investment advice. The American Family Association's mission is to inform, equip, and activate individuals to strengthen the moral foundations of our culture. We also support the church. Our goal is to be a leading organization in biblical worldview training for cultural transformation. 
We believe true morality flows from biblical principles and directs people to the manner in which God intends them to live. Thank you for standing with the American Family Association as we seek to stop the erosion of godly values. Are you a financial advisor or a CPA seeking to build your practice on biblical wisdom? Not only does the Certified Kingdom Advisor Education provide you with deep biblical insights, the CKA designation sets you apart. Each year, almost 50,000 people search for a Christian financial advisor. Join our community and share your expertise with clients looking for someone who shares their faith and values. Find more information at kingdomadvisors.com slash get certified. If you believe in the work of the American Family Association and you want to ensure that it continues for generations, consider including a gift in your will or trust. It's one of the most popular and effective ways to give. You'd simply connect with one of your advisors who would help you include language in your will or trust to include a specific gift to the American Family Association. If you'd like to learn more or connect with an advisor who can help you with that, just go to afafoundation.net. We are grateful for support from Sound Mind Investing in the Faith and Finance Program. For more than 30 years, they've been helping Christians reach their financial goals with step-by-step -step guidance for investors at every stage, from those just getting started to those getting ready for retirement. Through scriptural principles and practical suggestions, SMI offers financial wisdom for living well. More information, including the short video webinar on profit and peace of mind, no matter what's happening in the market, is available at soundmindinvesting.org. about your financial questions and your role as a steward of God's money in light of biblical wisdom. We're going to head back to the phones. Let's get to as many questions as we can. We'll go to Florida next. Hi, Mark. Go ahead. Hey, how are you? I'm great, sir. How are you doing? Uh, I'm working and I'm retired. Okay. <laughs> anyway, my question, uh, my question is um, I am a retired um, air reserve technician, so I have dual status. I worked as a government employee, and on the weekends, I worked as a reservist. Anyway, I retired two and a half years ago, and I have a TSP account with a roughly $200,000 in it, maybe a little bit more. And my question is, should I take that money out of the TSP account and reinvest that in a money market or something like that, or should I just leave it be? Yeah, um, well, I may have a third option for you. I mean, because I like you rolling it out. I guess I'm just wondering why the, the money market. So give me a sense of what is your total investable uh, retirement assets? Um, I think it's $210,000. Right, but that's your TSP. But do you have other retirement savings? Uh, my, when I turn 67, I'll draw Social Security. Um, I'm pulling in from my government and military retirement about $2,500 a month. Okay. And my part-time job, I'm bringing in about 2000 a month as well. Okay. And then what other assets do you have? So you don't have any IRAs or any other retirement funds, correct? That is correct. All right. And what about emergency uh, savings? Uh, about $30,000. Okay, great. And uh, what are you are you able to live within your means on that roughly forty five hundred a month before Social Security? Yes, I'm okay. doing quite well actually. So uh, okay, not. that's great. All right, so tell me why are you thinking money market? Why not get that invested? Um, I work on airplanes. I don't know anything about investing, so that, that's why I'm calling you. Yeah. Well, when I get on an airplane, I rely on people like you to fix them and pilots to fly them, which is why, you know, if you if you work your whole life and you save a couple hundred grand, which is a lot of money, I like the idea of you hiring somebody to manage that. Uh, and here's why. I mean, what is your age, Mark? I'm 62 and a half. All right. So let's say you lived age 95. I mean, we don't know if we have another breath. Only the Lord does. But uh, if you relatively healthy and the Lord tarries, I mean, you could live another 30 plus years. And so if you did, we want this money to last. And even if you're able to live comfortably on your two retirement 
uh, checks prior to Social Security, you're going to have even more when you get Social Security, and that's great, um, which means you could continue to save and, and maybe even start giving some more away. But I love the idea of this 210,000 continuing to grow into the future because, you know, if you needed long-term care, I mean, you know, maybe you rely on the VA, but, um, you know, depending on what your needs are, you could end up needing to tap into these assets. And so I think, sure, there's something to be said about protecting it, especially while rates are up where they are now, where you could get 5% in the money market, but that's not going to last. And I think the idea would be that, you know, typically we'd say somebody who's roughly 60 years old, you know, we'd probably say you should probably have about 50% of this 200,000 in stocks and maybe the other 50% in fixed income like bonds and CDs, and then maybe a small portion in money market. But I think because this is not your area of expertise, just like airplanes are not mine, I'd hire an advisor to manage that for you. I would roll it out of the TSP. And once you, um, you know, separate from your service, to the government, then you can do that rollover uh, from the thrift savings into an IRA, and then that advisor could take over managing that money with an eye toward protecting it, but also growing it to offset the effects of inflation. How does that sound, though? That sounds good. Uh, my wife uh, says she wants to do the same thing with uh, roughly $80,000 she's got in savings, so we would yeah. probably combine that money. Yeah. and. Uh, <clears throat> Our, our home is paid for. We've got about four hundred thousand dollars in equity on it, but we're not going anywhere because of that. Um, okay. So um, we're just trying to figure this thing out. Yeah, well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. I mean, you got plenty of income sources. You got some retirement assets that you built up. You wouldn't combine them. You'd need to keep yours separate from hers because retirement accounts are individual, not joint. But a single advisor could manage all of this for you, and, and I think that would be a, a great way to go. So what I do is um, I head to our website at faithfi.com. That's faithfi.com. And right there at the top of the page, it'll say find a professional. And I would uh, interview two or three advisors there in Florida and, and find the one that's a good fit. But I think that's a, uh, a great plan for you as you think about uh, the future. Sounds good. Thank you so much and God bless. Hey, God bless you, Mark. Thank you for your service to our country, sir. We're grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, Mark mentioned something. Uh, he said he was debt free. And by the way, I love the idea of setting a goal to have all your debts paid by the time you retire. Uh, fewer and fewer people are in that ideal situation. Listen to this study I came across today. 25 years ago, half of Americans between the ages of 65 and 74 were debt free. It's about a third now. And Debt hems us in, especially when the economy slows down like it is now, and you know the stock market declines, and that's going to happen if we get into a recession. Um, it certainly has happened before; it'll happen again. And so, if you can get out of debt by the time you retire, like Mark and his wife have done, you'll be glad you did. Because here's what that's done for them: it's put them in a position where, with these guaranteed income checks they're getting through his retirement uh, and his part-time job, and eventually his Social Security by getting the house payment off the table, it takes that biggest expense out of the equation. It just makes the ability to balance the budget so much easier. So really work toward that, even if it means you gotta work a little bit longer to kind of sync up your retirement date uh, when you switch to whatever God has next for you. Uh, with your payoff of your mortgage, it'll make all the difference in the world. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk to Kansas, uh, excuse me, Candace in West Palm and George just down the street from her in Boynton Beach. We'll be right back. We are grateful to Chessman Wealth Strategies for their support of faith and finance. Their mission is to help clients make smart choices with their money so they can worry less, enjoy life, and ultimately become good stewards of the resources God has entrusted to them. Chessmanwealth.com. That's Chessmanwealth.com. The phone number is 214-572-2120. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. We're going to talk about the further issue, our response, who's behind this. Sandy Rios on Sandy Rios 24-7. Talk is cheap. 
honest, insightful. Doing nothing is creating chaos in the world. Danger for America. Sandy Rios informs listeners from a Christian worldview. It's time to act in the polls because I have to tell you, most of them are just doing nothing. Listen on the podcast page at AFR.net. Frustrated by your health insurance? Confused by the network restrictions and increasing premiums? There's a better way. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is a Christian community delivering a faith-based solution to the high cost of healthcare. Take back control of your healthcare with the ability to choose a provider you trust with no network restrictions and savings of up to 40%. Learn more and enroll today at chministries.org slash faithfi. That's chministries.org slash faithfi. Have you downloaded the Faith by app yet? You need to do that today because this is going to make your life easier. Yes, you can manage your money through the in-app envelope feature, but also plan out future goals. I want to buy a house in five years and I'm on track to do that. Here's also what I like. You can connect with people around the country. It's like social media, but better. Ask a question, get an answer and share what you're learning about money and investing. So why don't you grab your phone right now and download the Faith by app. When you hear this, this is American Family News. You know what follows is the truth. Your news from a Christian perspective. Hundreds of teachers are going to have to walk into that school building and they are forced to swallow political ideology and in many cases violate their very faith and conscience. If you miss it at the top of the hour, American Family News podcasts are available at AFN.net. And sign up for our daily news brief at AFN.net. We are grateful for support from the Eventide Center for Faith and Investing. ECFI is an educational initiative of Eventide Asset Management that seeks to help Christians understand and practice biblically faithful investing. They do this through their podcast and online journal featuring articles from industry thought leaders and their course called Discover God's Story for Investing. More information is available at faithandinvesting.com. That's faithandinvesting.com. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. Delighted to have you along with us today on Faith and Finance here on American Family Radio. Why faith and finance? Well... As we accept our role as stewards of God's resources, that's right, it all belongs to Him. Well, we want our faith to inform the financial decisions we're making. You see, we start with our values and priorities as believers. And then we look to the counsel of Scripture and we say, what are those principles, the big ideas and themes we can pull out of God's Word around how we manage His money? And then we make decisions in the here and now with confidence. But we want our faith to be right there in the mix because we want to invite God into our financial lives. You see, my experience is that our financial journey is one of the key ways God shapes our spiritual journey as we hold what he's entrusted to us loosely. So often, what can be a chief competitor to lordship is the financial resources that we have, that which God has entrusted to us. Because as we make money an end, as opposed to a means to an end, a tool, well, it can compete with God for first position in our lives. We see that clearly in scripture. You remember the parable of the sower? What choked out the word from bearing a 30, 60, 100 fold return was uh, the desires for other things, the deceitfulness of wealth. If we pursue money as an end in and of itself, well, it can absolutely compete with our hearts for our devotion to the Lord. So let's not do that. Let's seek the counsel of Scripture. Let's live with contentment and joy. Let's hold God's resources loosely, apply his wisdom, look to give generously because that breaks the grip of money over our lives. And when we do, we will experience God's best uh, as we apply his wisdom. All right, let's go to West Palm Beach. Beautiful West Palm Beach. Hi, Candace. How can I help? Hi. It actually is very beautiful. I am it doing is. that as well. <laughs> I was just there at uh, Palm oh, Beach nice. Atlantic. I was uh, oh. a few blocks from Worth Avenue, and it is just spectacular. I was coming it over the causeway nice there. Weather. and just uh, Yeah, it's great. Anyway, how can I help you? Okay. So I wanted to get your thoughts. I currently, my husband and I currently have a three bedroom, two bathroom, and we're looking to upgrade because my parents are planning on moving in with me. 
Yeah. And we have 260, we're planning on our selling, so we'll be having 260 in a deposit towards summer, but I mean, our ballpark was 500, but it's a little tricky finding a four bedroom at that price point. So I mean, yeah. in the worst case, we'd be willing to, I mean, not ideally, but probably going to like 540, but that's gonna probably be about 30% of our take home. And I know 25% is the ideal. I kind of just wanted to get your thoughts on that. We do have about 30 in um, emergency savings and that's cool. on top of, so I, we still would be doing our um, 401k contributions and we do tight. So I kind of just wanted yeah. to have yeah, I'd be comfortable with that. I mean, I think, you know, between 25 and 30% of your take home for principal interest taxes and insurance, and then another 5%. So if you're at 25, you know, add 5% to that, or if you're 30, add five. So you go up as high as 35% with the other categories as well. So that's going to include home maintenance and utilities and homeowners association, that kind of thing. So I think you're right in the ballpark there. And I think given that, you know, you're making, you're, you're using the guideline as a starting point, but this